Hey guys, welcome to this month's book club where we're going to be talking about noughts and crosses. Next month we're going to be looking at uh, Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. So you've got a month to read that one and then I'll post my video on it in the first weekend of the month. So, Noughts and Crosses. I know loads and loads of you have read this book, I know loads and loads of you have loved it, but the people I've spoken to at school when I told them this is what I was reading this month, they weren't that keen on it. And I will admit, I found this bit of a slog to get into. It is really quite a long book, so it did take me quite a long time to read. I finished it last night. So, how, how did you find reading it? Did you find it easy to get into? Did you find um, that you, you caught your attention the whole way through? I will admit a few um, sections, I just kind of like really quickly skim read them, so just like reading down the middle of the page, which I know is bad, but I did think this dragged in some places. I know loads and loads of you are going to completely disagree with me about that, but that's just how I found it. Reading it, it felt like it felt like a historical saga to me. It didn't, it didn't feel that, um, it didn't feel that new. It didn't feel that um, innovative. It brought up a lot of things that have actually happened. So the um, bombing of the shopping centre is very similar to when the um, IRA bombed the Arndale Centre in um, 96, I think. They called in a warning beforehand so that people could be evacuated and that was what was supposed to happen but for some reason didn't in this book. And when um, the North started in the school, they were escorted in by the, the police and there was a riot. This is really, really similar to when um, the first black students started at the University of Mississippi in 1962. So this is what happened when James Meredith um, went on his first day. He had to be escorted in by US Marshals and there were loads and loads of riots. And things like that crop up all over the book. So... For me, I didn't really like that, I, I thought it wasn't very original, but do you think maybe that by the author adding in parts of history, stuff that had re really happened, did that detract from the book or did it make it more realistic, more believable for you guys? What do you think about that? The way the book's written I thought was really, really good. So each chapter it alternates between um, Sefi's voice and Cam's voice. I thought this was a really, really good um, thing for the author to do because it made it really accessible to, to boys and girls. You wouldn't say this is a boy book, you wouldn't say this is a girl book because both um, the male and female character in there have really, really strong voices, making it much more accessible to loads and loads of people. So I thought it was something that the author did really, really well. Did you enjoy reading it or not enjoy reading it based on the, the switching between characters? I know some people like to stick with one character the whole way through. What do you think about that? How did, you, how did, how did being in someone else's head, uh, different people's heads for the, for the book make you feel about it? As well as bringing in loads of historical events, the author, um, it really, really reminded me of um, Romeo and Juliet. So the author's taken a very, very common, very, very well-known play and brought in loads of aspects of that. So there's the climbing up the balcony scene. There's the using of um, Sarah to deliver the letter, which is very similar to what the priest did delivering the letter. And just like in Romeo and Juliet, um, the letter gets read too late. So... Again, that was something I didn't really like about the book. It felt like something I'd read before. It didn't really feel that fresh or that new, partly because of the historical events, but also partly because of the play. But did you like it? Did you like being able to spot all the bits that came out of Romeo and Juliet? Did you like all the similarities? And what do you think would have happened if Callum had read the letter in time and had actually gone and um, got Sefi before she went off to boarding school? Do you, do you think that would have made a better book? Do you, would you like that to happen? I know I certainly would have liked that to happen. I was, um, I was, I was quite upset when um, she was driving away and he was running after and she didn't hear. There's quite a powerful scene in the book where Sefi goes to sit at um, Callum's, ta Callum's table knowing that she's, she's going to probably get in trouble for this, knowing that people are going to be staring at her. In her situation, what would you have done? Would you go and sit at that table or would you have not? And then the same, in Callum's situation, what would you have done? Someone that you're really, really friends with but you know you don't talk to in school, do you talk to them in school? 
or do you just talk to them outside of school? And maybe in the future, if you see someone sitting on their own, it might be nice to just, just go and say hello. So in Steffi's situation, what would you do? Would you go and sit at the table or would you not go and sit at the table? The author um, shows, shows us the inequality between noughts and crosses in so, so many different ways in this book. One of them, which you may or may not have picked up on, it was really subtle, but the author has a really, really powerful grip on language and on grammar. Now, I know teachers, me, we nag you about your spelling, punctuation and grammar all the time, but the author shows us that this is really, really important. You may have noticed that um, crosses get a capital letter at the start, but noughts only get a lowercase letter at the start of noughts whenever it's mentioned in the book. This is another really powerful way that the author has used grammar to, to show us the status of varying, di varying different um, groups in the book. Towards the end of the book, um, when Callum has uh, kidnapped Sefi, and then he starts a fight with Jude and Sefi escapes. That a little, a little bit of me suspected that, you know, maybe the author is suggesting that he did it on purpose so that Sefi could have the chance to escape. He's got, it's got to be a really hard situation for Callum having kidnapped his best friend, someone he's obviously in love with. Do you think he let her escape by starting the fight? And then the last question, and this is a really, really hard question for you guys because um, I don't know how many of you have kids or little brothers or sisters, probably not very many of you, considering this is aimed at GCSE students. Um, but do you think that Sefi made the right decision in the end? When given the choice between having an abortion and saving Callum's life, she chose to save the life of the, um, her unborn baby over um, Callum. Now, obviously some people are going to think that she made the wrong decision, that she should have saved Callum. What do you think? Now, I say this is a really, really hard um, question for you to answer because um, I have a baby who's very, very cute, um, and just just something happens when you have a baby. It's it's just falling in love all over again in a completely unimaginable, undescribable kind of way. And I love my baby in a completely different way that I love my husband. So it, it's probably um, a, an unfair question for me to ask you because you you don't really have the, the life experiences to be able to base this on, but do you think Sefi made the right decision? If there are any other bits you'd like to talk about, um, pop them in the comments below. I found this book um, a bit of a slog, but next month is a book by one of my favourite, favourite authors, Sophie Kinsella, I'm going to be reading Finding Audrey, um, and I really, really hope that uh, you'll be back next month to see how it goes.